Um, so I'm talking to Olivier Puyon, who is an environmental waste management uh, consultant, mm -hmm. uh, working here in Bali, uh, has been living and working in Bali for the last 17 years. Um, Olivier, just tell me a little bit about what you do at the moment. Well, I right now I'm helping uh, set up with um, some local Indonesians a, a what they call an MRF, a material recovery facility, up in an area called Ubud, which is a quite a touristy area now. And uh, it's essentially a waste uh, management facility uh, to stop uh, kind of stop illegal dumping in rivers and things like that, as because there really isn't a viable solution there. And so we're providing a system that we've actually already done in other places and try to establish it there. So when you say um, it, it, you've done it in other places, do you mean other places in Bali, or do you mean? Yeah, we. I actually, when I first came here, I was working for a local environmental organization. Um, called the Visnu Foundation, and their focus is on the problem of, of waste. Um, and uh, during that time, we set up down south a, a recycling facility, an MRF, um, to deal with the issue of hotel pollution down there as well. And that was from basically 95 till 97, and it's still operating today. Okay, so uh, in terms of so what happens in relation to, say, hotel pollution or the rubbish problems that exist in Bali? Well, well it's, I mean, it's not, it's not unusual um, in, in Indonesia and other, you know, other places like Indonesia not really have much of a waste infrastructure. So waste generation coming from the hotel industry is actually, you know, is, is the largest. They're the big producers of waste because you have these big, you know, three, four hundred room hotels. So obviously, you're going to have a lot of waste. Um, but everyone produces waste, and it's a problem across the board. And what was essentially happening for a long time is you'd have a local guy come and collect the waste um, just with any old truck, and then um, you know, bring it maybe 500 meters a kilometer away and, and dump it wherever. It was essentially just moving the problem, and uh, you know, collect and dump and not really thinking about the consequences. So they're often throwing in what were here traditional areas to dump were, were usually rivers or uh, in estuaries or in mangroves. So um, you could see this, see the problem getting worse and worse. And also there wasn't a lot of waste collectors at all. It was really most households in that didn't have anything. So you would just throw it over your wall. And in the past when there wasn't, you know, this much construction and space, you know, everyone could hide it away. Um, and, but not anymore. And so that's what we're trying to provide a system that essentially is built up through dealing with the commercial uh, entities, businesses, hotels, restaurants to build up the foundation of, of the system and then it can expand into the community. So communities that, that really don't have any waste management, villages and things, um, can start uh, having the service. So it's, they start to understand um, its utility um, and realize that uh, you know once they see a reliable service because what they're always always comparing it to is uh, maybe a sporadic government service or uh, a local service that might collect every once in a while that doesn't really keep the place clean we try to start more professional more formal more reliable service so people can understand what it's about and then also promotes the idea of you know we understand that the the waste there's a lot of stuff in the waste that's resourceful that you can recycle reuse and we try to set up a system to optimize that at the moment it, it, there's a lot of informal recycling but it's not very effective okay so and how um, what's the uptake like in relation to what you're trying to do at the, moment? the uptake you mean uh, in terms of the response to um, to waste collection or waste management in the way that you're you're uh, well, a lot of people, <clears throat> the, the, a lot of people are uh, are interested, want it, but the reality is, is that it's still so much cheaper to not do it, and that um, you know you'll hear a lot of times in the West people say, "Oh, go green, it's good for the bottom line." Well, in you know in countries like this, not you know if you're thinking just the bottom line, you can keep polluting, and that's what a lot of businesses and a lot of people do because it literally costs nothing or very little to just have someone take it away and dump it wherever. And having a system that works, especially since we have to build a, a customer base, and it's not—it's not like you get a, you get a, 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 a franchise or a license uh, permit from from the city or from the town to operate the whole area. It doesn't really operate. It doesn't work. You have to one by one mm -hmm. add customers. It makes it very expensive. So people, you know, businesses and people have to make a commitment to to paying for it. And after a while, you know. 
I mean, the customers, we, we, you know, there are people that understand it and see the threat to their, the long-term viability of, of their business, or they live here and they understand they don't want this place to get dirtier and dirtier. They make those commitments, but that's still, they're still the exception, not the rule. But one by one, it, it'll change. It takes time, but it'll happen. Mm. Yeah. And what is it that you offer them that would be different, say, to somebody who's, if you're going to collect your clients one by one, and you need to be persuading them to use your system which at the end of the day does cost them more what what is it what's new useful well it's it's a complete it's a complete system it's a holistic system in the, in the sense that it's not just about taking the garbage away and just putting it someplace else it's about um, making sure that you're setting up a system that's sustainable that can think about the consequences of the, the elements in the waste that are very dangerous so when we go to a, a, a restaurant for most of our customers are in our restaurant so they often have problems having reliable collection you know they're not always coming when they're supposed to and in most places they don't have a lot of room to put their waste so if the waste is sitting out there for a few hours more or for a few couple days more it's not being picked up it affects their business so they want to have a reliable service that they, they know is going to come every day and if there's a problem they can call also they want to be able, be able to say that they're doing things in, uh, in a green way so we help them set up systems that recycle that have that have um, measures and metrics um, so every month they're getting a waste report so they know how much plastic they recycled, how much paper they recycled, how much aluminum, and they get that feedback, and that also enables them to check the system, see if it's working, and also gives them uh, ways to make sure their staff, their you know, encourage their staff in that. Mm -hmm. And then we also from we explain how what's actually happened to the waste. So when it goes to our facility, it's not just being dumped there. There, it's actually being processed. I mean, in 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 Bali, there's a lot of massage places, and so we call our, our place like a, a garbage massage place. So we massage all the garbage, so to speak. We try to divert it to whatever we can find a way to reuse it or recycle. So a lot of uh, organic food waste that if it can't go to pig farmers or, or cattle as fodder um, we have a biogas system and the idea is uh, as we grow we'll be able to produce our own energy through the biogas system to generate so we won't be reliant on on uh, uh, local power uh, the government power since it's unreliable there are a lot of things in the waste that don't have uh, any value that are recycled we're finding ways to reuse that like glass bottles we're able to modify and make into handicraft things we're able to start producing uh, charcoal briquettes um, you know uh, things cooking uh, wood and all that is in most places of the world is a big big problem mm -hmm. you know cutting down um, forests and this and that for just cooking fuel so we're taking the waste and producing what they call biochar um, and things like that. So we're always trying to find new, I mean, in terms of, of innovation and technology, trying to find things that right now don't have a value and turn into something valuable. Mm. Styrofoam, horrible thing. Can't find, no one wants to recycle it. No one wants to have anything to do with it. It's just, but we figure, okay, we can collect enough of it and then grind it up and mix it with cement and make cinder blocks that are lighter but stronger. Things like that. Mm. So we're, we're always looking at the waste and trying to find waste. And then what's left over that's really... Um, the residue, we make sure it goes to the official government landfill and not being dumped irresponsibly. Right. Yeah. Okay. And um, um, I can't remember what that was. Well, I, I, there's one thing I can add yeah. also to that is we've just started doing hazardous waste. Ah, oh, yes, that's right. So it's something yeah. that people don't want to think about, don't have any idea about. Everything goes, you know. Um, into the normal garbage and there's actually quite a lot of things in there that are dangerous and in small quantities or not but when you have everybody dumping it it's, it ends up being quite a bit so just even batteries or uh, you know broken electronic equipment uh, you know, whatever TVs computers uh, broken aircon um, even like w small batteries um, light bulbs fluorescent mm. light bulbs those are horrible these things are all quite dangerous and they're being essentially just thrown into our environment here mm. and I'm sure it's the same in, in most um, countries in the world that yeah. don't have a system so we're the first one to offer that service to not just to our business customers but to uh, the public as well and I think that's the first in Indonesia